Welcome, everybody. My name is Pastor Dave Carter. I'm with New Life in Sterling. And the title of today's message is Coming Through to Victory. We're reading today in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And we'll begin reading there at verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we who live are always delivered unto death, for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We have the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. Knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus, and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sake, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. Paul, writing here to his new established believers in Corinth, and he knew and he realized that many of them were uneducated. And so he would write this to them. Not many wise men after the flesh. Not many wise men after the flesh. Meaning, if you live for Christ, you don't live according to the flesh. You walk by the Spirit of God in your life, doing the right thing always. See, and he's going to talk about here the reasons why we have difficulties and there are many that are, are attempting to live to self and not living unto the Lord Jesus Christ. And so there were those that were trying to live a good moral life and a decent life, but they were living in a time of corruption as we are living in today. And there are many believers that have given their life to Christ, but are having many troubles living for the Lord because of the corruption that's in our land. And so, if you look at this passage of Scripture, it will help you to understand that every person and every believer go through many troubles, many distresses, but the Lord will bring us through. For he says unto them, I write out of great distress and anguish of heart, and with many tears, not to grieve you, but to let you know the depth of my love for you. Paul was writing to them, not to put them down in any manner, but to show them Christ's love. Christ loves us with an everlasting love, and he wants us to do the right thing and to live the right way. And so we must understand how we're able to achieve that as we walk and we live for the Lord. Here in this chapter 4, Paul begins by telling them about his ministry and his calling. And he tells them about how that God had given him a great task to do, that also that God has given him a great walk of life for him, and finally the great secrets that he has learned in this life as he has traveled through it. Paul talks about God, who is great in mercy, who has given us wonderful works of telling his good news to others. And so we should never give up serving the Lord Jesus Christ. This great task that God has given each of us as a believers, so often people say, you know, I've not been called to, uh, to, to the ministry. I've not been called. Well, the Bible says all are called, but few are chosen meaning that we need to decide today that we're going to serve the Lord no matter what the task is that he assigns to us, that we'll do it and bring glory and honor to him. 
The second thing Paul realized about the great task that he was given him afforded him many opportunities to establish not only uh, believers, but also churches. He established many churches that he would write to, and that's where we have the letters of Corinthians and other letters as well that were written to the churches that he established. See, Paul was never going to give up <clears throat> on an opportunity to do something for God, nor should we give up the opportunity that God gives to us and that wonderful opportunity is given through a task that he would speak into our heart to do. In my case, God called me to the pastorate of a church. That's what I was called to do. I didn't call myself. Actually, when I was in high school, after I had told years previously to the Lord that I would serve him in any matter whatsoever, when he began to call me, I turned away from the call. God had to wake me up, shake me up, finally that I would turn my life totally over to serve him, which I did, and then I knew the calling was sure, and then I entered to one of our colleges, a Bible college, to study the Word of God and prepare myself for that which lied ahead. And so I, I'm so glad that God gives us tasks to do that will bring glory and honor to him. But there were those that thought Paul used wrong methods, that he, 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 when he was reaching out, that he did it in unscrupulous manners, that he had some way uh, taken the word of God out of context. See, they were misunderstanding the motives of Paul. And you know, that can grieve your heart when people don't understand what you're trying to convey and speak to them. But Paul would take this opportunity as he writes to his church in Corinth to speak to these matters. That Paul would tell them that he proclaimed the gospel and that, that when he could proclaim the gospel, his conscience was clear that he did it in the right way and the right manner. See, Paul goes on to state that the God of this world has blinded the mind so they cannot believe. He's writing about Satan here, not God Almighty, but Satan, who is the prince and power of the air of this earth, and he tries to convince people that they don't need God, they don't need to read the Bible, they don't need to pray, that, you know, they're okay, and one day they'll get into heaven. No, no. That it's a lie. That's not truth. But the truth is, you must be born again. You have to have a conversion in your life and heart, meaning you, you have to give an opportunity to allow yourself to say to the Lord Jesus, forgive me, come in my heart, and cleanse me from sin, set me free, and Lord, begin to use me. And so Paul is trying to convey to them how that God wants to use them. In Matthew 13, it talks about the parable of the sower, and it says the sower went out to sow, and when he cast out the seed, some seed fell where birds would eat. The bird seed. I've seen birds, as soon as you cast out the seed, they're down there trying to eat the bird seed. He said Other, others fell upon the rock, the hard rock, which would bring no uh, uh, growth whatsoever. Some fell on just on the top of the soil, but then he said others fell into good rich soil. And see, we as Christians, when we give out the message of the Lord Jesus Christ and his wonderful salvation, we cast a broad net. And we, we know that the Lord has said, whosoever will. So the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, meaning the churches that are here upon the earth, are open to all people to come through to give their life to the Lord Jesus. It's whosoever will. And so Paul understood that and that he would spread a broad net to win people to the Lord because that was the task that God had given him and the Lord had equipped him to do. And so we see that Satan will battle you to keep you from doing the great tasks that God has assigned you. 
And that's why, and, and that's why he goes on to tell us, no matter what we go through, there's a beautiful path to victory. There's a path to victory. Though the path that we're on may be filled with blockades from Satan, who's trying to hinder us and keep us from doing that task, we will come through with victory. Because he goes on to talk about the great walk of life. And he says that, but we have a treasure in earthen vessel, the scripture we read earlier, that the excellency of power may be of God and not of us. What treasure is Paul talking about? It's the word of God. The psalmist in Psalms 19 says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. I want you to know, when you get the, the word of God in your life, you read this Bible, you study it, you hear it preached and talked about, and you get it in your life, it's a treasure. It's a wonderful treasure. It's a treasure that I fall back on constantly. When my day's not going well, I'll start quoting a scripture or I'll start singing a song that may have the word of God in it. And it lifts me up and encourages me and let me know that I'm on the right path as you are on the right path today if you've turned your life to the Lord. And you would know that you have a wonderful treasure within your life. This great walk is so great because we have that treasure. And that treasure is there to keep us that we will not become prideful in our life. You know, when we accomplish things, even for the Lord, if we accomplish something, we become prideful if we're not careful. We always need to keep our life humble. Be a humble servant before the Lord. Be humble before him. The Bible says, if you humble self before the Lord, he shall lift you up. And he said, Paul would write, that no matter the circumstances, he would continue this walk with Christ. That would not hinder him no matter what the circumstances are. So often when things just don't go our way, we have a tendency to want to quit and give up. But I can tell you today, if you quit and give up, you will not win the victory. You will not win the prize of the prize of the high calling. You cannot quit. You cannot give up. If you're discouraged today, turn your eyes back to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith and your soon coming king. And he will begin to equip you once again with his power. Man's power is limited, but God's power is continually coming and strengthening us from day to day to moment to moment to second to second to raise us up to walk this wonderful life of promise that he's given to us. What Paul found, the secret of, as I have found it in my own life as well, when I am weak, he is strong. You know, that doesn't make sense to uh, the average person. You know, if you're weak, how can you be strong? You have to be strong, and you need to do this, this, and this to become strong. No, I'm weak because I depend upon the Lord for help every single day. I wake up saying, and my heart and spirit, this is the day that the Lord had made for me. I'm glad. I'll rejoice in it. Now, do I say those exact words? No. But I look at each day as given from God with the wonderful promise of blessing as I begin to travel down it. Don't ever forget that this earthen vessel that has this wonderful treasure is fragile. It's going to deteriorate. There are times you may overwork yourself and become sick. There are times that you will allow the pains of this earth come into your life and may even harm you. But the Lord is wanting to raise you up today and to remove those infirmities that would hinder you walking with Christ today. So Paul's going to tell us what has happened and then how that you overcome it. He writes there in verses 8 and 9, he said, We are oppressed at every point. But not him then. Last year, with the virus beginning to continually to grow and continue to uh, excel and begin to inhabit many people with the sickness and the virus, 
When all those came, it felt like we were pressed down. Did you feel that being pressed down, pushed down, and it felt like you couldn't rise up? But Paul says, if we're pressed, we're not hemmed in. We can, we can again rise up out of the most worst painful conditions of our life, even if we're in huge depression or stress. And that's what many of our young people are dealing today is much depression that has taken to many of them to commit suicide. What a hor horrible thing. Oh, it just, it just hurts at my soul to see a wonderful young life taken away because of depression, because of the pressures of life, not realizing, though you may be pressed down, you're not hemmed in. We are never in such a tight place that there's no way out. God always makes sure his children have a way out of their situation. There'll be times that you will feel that under the circumstances, you can't get out of them. But I want you to know, no matter what the circumstances are, God will make a way out if you need it. And so Paul explains this a little bit clearer with, uh, with several paradoxes. A paradox is something sometimes that, that doesn't sound truthful, but it is. He speaks about them where he says, We are persecuted by people, but never abandoned by God. Jesus promised, I will never leave thee. No, I will never leave thee. You know, it's wonderful to have people that will support you and hold you up and who will promise you and keep their word and say, I won't leave you. I'll be right here if you need me. And that's what Jesus has promised. He said, in the world you will have troubles, but take heart, I've overcome the world. And he even said in Psalms, even when your father and mother would abandon you, the Lord will always take you up. Isn't that a beautiful promise? Beautiful promise that the Lord will always be there to help us. That shows you the loyalty of our God that we serve. See, he would speak in this paradox that the Christian life, in the Christian life, there are times we may seem like that we're at our wit's end, but we never lose hope. Have you ever felt like you were at your wit's end, you didn't know what to do, where you should go, what you should say, how you were going to uh, get money that you needed to pay your bills, and you begin to worry and fret in your mind, which is filled with so many problems with, with no answers? That's called wit's end. But Paul would say, you can come to your wit's end, but you're not out of hope, because you have your hope in the Lord. The Lord will come through to bring you to victory. Don't ever forget that. See, we may stand in doubt and wonder how in the world God's going to show up in this mess, but he will show up at the right time in your mess to take you out of the mess to take you again upon the solid rock, which is Jesus Christ. Yeah, there are times that I have felt like I was at my wit's end. But isn't it so wonderful? I called on the Lord and he took me by the hand and he led me into victory. You see, the finally and the fourth paradox that he's going to share these in these scriptures is that you can get knocked down, but not knocked out. I'm sure many of you have seen box ma boxing matches, even in movies, and you watch the guy, he's going down and they're counting down, and, and he's, he, he, he's the one that you wanted to win, and finally he rises up at the last minute and because he was not knocked out. See, a boxer wants to knock his opponent out. He wants to give him that final blow that takes him out of competition. Satan's trying to give us that final blow to take us out of our, our wonderful work for the Lord, the wonderful task, the wonderful life, this wonderful Christian walk. He wants to remove all of that. So he's trying to hit us with things to knock us out down and knock us out, but he knocks us down. I've been knocked down several times, but I rise back up to victory. See, the supreme characteristic of a Christian life is not that we are knocked down, but rather every time we as a believer rise up again.
And I'm praying for you that here in this message, if you need to rise up again, I want you to cry out to the Lord today and say, Lord, change my life. I want to work for you. I want to serve you. Yeah, Satan has knocked me down so many times. But right now, Lord, help me to rise back up. Help me to rise right up right now, this very moment that I'm hearing this word today, that faith will arise in your spirit Finally, Paul's going to address the great secrets of this life. What did he learn as he went through this life? What did what challenges that he had that caused him to learn things that would help each one of us as we travel through this life? See, he talked about a couple words, endurance and bearing things. Endurance. See, he writes here in verse 11, Paul talks about dying with Christ. We die that the life of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Paul understood a simple truth. No cross, no crown. Paul understood that it took great courage because he had to face many uncertainties to stand for Christ in the midst of problems, in the midst of troubles, the midst of the storm. But Christ promised him life eternal. So his eyes were always upon the eternal prize, eternal life. We as Christians need to get our eyes back on the promise that the Lord says that he came to give us everlasting life. That no matter what happens in this life, we have been promised eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Paul drew on this power which calls him to be able to do the great and mighty things that God wanted him to do. So he talks about also, as I mentioned, bearing and enduring. So often when trials and troubles come our way, we don't want to bear them. We don't want to endure them. We want to quit. We want to bail out. But listen to Paul writes here in verse 15 of this chapter. <clears throat> Excuse me. All things are for your sake. That the abundant grace might be through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. We do this that God will receive glory. Not that we would get a pat on the back. Not that somebody would say good things about us. But we do it that God would be glorified. That God would be worshipped. See, as Paul understood, began to understand that wonderful promise of eternal life, he could bear he could endure. See, that word endure means the ability to last, to remain, to withstand the pain and distresses and fatigue of this life. See, we don't faint, he says, for this cause we faint not because of the high stakes. The high stakes is eternal life. But, through the, but though this outward man perish, meaning that we take a hard beating sometimes in this life, Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Wow, what a promise. What a promise. If you will allow yourself to endure, <clears throat> the promise is for you today. The promise of eternal life. The promise is coming through to great victory. Yeah, Paul knew that the physical man is temporal. It's only going to last so long. This physical body is only going to last so long. It's eventually going to perish. It's slipping away. But the spiritual man is climbing upward into the presence of Almighty God. We need not fear as each year comes. We don't know what we're going to face as this year is beginning to proceed. But we know that the Lord is with us and that the Lord will take us by the hand and lead us through. And because Paul understood this secret of eternal life, that's what he was far reaching for. He would say of our problems, he said, for our light afflictions, meaning our problems are light. Because why? Because listen to what he would say. But for a moment work for us a more exceedingly and eternal weight of glory. He says the problems that we have to endure and bear and our life are small, tiny, <clears throat> compared to eternity. 
He was convinced that they were small and tiny when you compare it to eternity and everlasting life with Jesus Christ, our Lord. That's why he would write this things that we see are temporal, but the things that we cannot see are eternal or everlasting. He understood that, yes, this physical man is deteriorating. I've only got so much time to work for the Lord. I must view each moment, each hour of the day as beneficial, not only for me, but for those that I will be able to serve and help bring them to Christ. That's why I love living for the Lord. That's why I love serving the Lord. I want to see people learn the wonderful secrets that I have learned in my own life, that I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather have Jesus than riches untold. <clears throat> I'd rather have Jesus than everything you could offer in this world. Because when I have Jesus, I have life, abundance. I have eternal life promise. One day I will be with the Lord in heaven <clears throat> for all of eternity. So do not let the troubles that you have faced overwhelm you. Because Jesus said in Matthew, Come unto me, all ye that are weary and burdensome, meaning heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon and learn of me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. And then he ends it by saying, For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So often it sounds like when we get a job set, uh, we feel that we're going to love and enjoy through our life. Somewhere along the way, some of them become a heavy yoke. And the heavy yoke will burn in, burning you down. And I've had people say to me sometimes, you know, I, I, I hate my job. And I said, well, why are you working there? Why are you staying there? Well, I make so much money, I can't quit. Meaning I have to work because I need the money, even though it's burning me down. And I was thinking, well, they don't understand that if they're burning down all the time, it will weigh on their health as well. And their health will not continue to be good and strong for them to produce whatever they're doing. The better thing for them would to leave that job, even leave the huge amount of money, and then pray and ask God to lead them to another place that will supply all their needs. That's what the Lord says, I'll supply all your needs according to my riches and glory. God owns everything. It all belongs to Him. And if it all belongs to Him, then He can take care of us today and I want you to stand upon the promises that God wants to bring you through your troubles unto victory. He wants to bring you the victory. See, Paul had that sharp focus upon the eternal value of all things. And you as a person, you as a Christian, are you that have not given your heart to the Lord. You're, you're valuable to the Lord. All of you. I say that to my congregation quite often. You're valuable to the Lord. But if you're not living for him, you're not a value to him. That's why you need to get your heart right with God today. As I begin to close this message today, I want you to turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look into his wonderful face and say, Lord, I've gone through many troubles and I'm still going through troubles. Lord, will you not help me? Will you not bring me through, as pastor has said, that you'll bring us through our troubles to victory? Lord, I stretch out my hand towards you. Take me by the hand and lead me to victory. Lead me in the path of righteousness. Lord, forgive me, for I have sinned against you, and you alone have I done these awful things. Cleanse me, I pray. Lord, write my name again in the Lamb's Book of Life that I will go to heaven eternally and live there with you forever and ever. Lord, let my eyes get on eternal things and not temporal. For that which I purchase here on the earth will remain on the earth and will perish. But that which I do for you will last throughout all of eternity. So, Lord, would you lead me and guide me? Teach me thy ways, O Lord, that I may learn of you, have communion with you, and be blessed. 
So bring me through my troubles to victory, I pray today, and I ask it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. May God richly bless you today.